I'm uh, here in the Highlands, I'm right next to one of my favorite locations in the Highlands, uh, right next to a big glacial river. Today I'm gonna show you how I make my uh, drone shots. So I'm gonna show you how I make them on the spot and then I will show you later at home how I edit them. Uh, so hopefully this can be useful to you if you're trying to get better drone images. So first I'm gonna start by taking off the drone. So my focus is going to be to photograph the braided rivers and I'm now finding uh, on my drone here I'm trying to find a nice composition. So what I'm doing is I'm flying above the river uh, and then I tilt the camera 90 degrees down and I find some nice patterns to start with. So once I found a nice pattern, I basically switched the camera into A, B, so I want to do bracketed shots to get the best quality. Uh, once I've done that, I tilt the camera down 90 degrees, make sure that it's tilted down. And then I take the first shot. And after taking the first shot, I move the camera in a straight line and then take another shot. And then I go further. Take another shot. And usually three shots is sufficient uh, for what I want to do. So once I've taken those shots, uh, I've essentially already created the base photographs I need for my panorama. Uh, and then I will take this further home uh, to my computer and then I will stitch them all together. So I got my drone back, uh, I took some good shots I think I found in the middle of the river. I found a really nice uh, nice pattern that, that I quite liked. I've been here many times before but every time it's different and every time I take a shot that I'm thinking like oh yeah this is this is quite nice. So yeah as you can see on the drone maybe it's uh, it was started to rain um, and my drone is quite wet but it's still doing fine. So, yeah, let's go back home and edit the shots. At my home. Um, now I'm gonna take you through part two which is showing you how I take uh, these photos that I took as a panorama, how I put them together and how I edit them a little bit. I will show you in Lightroom CC uh, because that's what I use. I don't use Lightroom Classic but uh, the process is very similar. Uh, it's the same tool, it just looks a little bit different. Uh, so yeah, let's dive in. So to keep things simple, I loaded up my favorite images as part of a panorama. So as you can see, there are nine images here. These are actually three photos that are each of them divided up in underexposed, overexposed and a normal exposed image. Uh, that's because I shot them bracketed. So what I want to do is I want to grab all of these images, select them all, then I want to right click go to photo merge and then I want to select HDR panorama merge. Uh, the reason why I will choose this instead of panorama is because I bracketed the shots. 
So as you will see, it will try to create a preview now. Here on the right, you can see there are different projections, spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. And as you can see, the spherical one, uh, it doesn't work uh, with these types of images. It's because we shot the panorama looking straight down at the river. Uh, in this case, you would choose the perspective. And when you choose the perspective, you will get a nice uh, stitched panorama. You can see here that I wasn't 100% flying straight. So this is why I get the white, white borders around the panorama. So what I want to do is, uh, you ha basically have two options. Either you choose boundary warp and boundary warp will fill in the rectangle uh, based on, you know, like it will stretch the image basically. Uh, to fill in the rectangle. You can, if I go back a little bit, you can see how the image is being warped uh, to fit the frame. And one other uh, option, if you don't want to have any distortion, because sometimes boundary warp can distort the image uh, quite dramatically, uh, you want to just select auto crop, and then it will crop everything uh, so all the white is not visible anymore. So in this case, I will just do auto crop and then press merge. Now it's going to uh, group all of these photographs, these nine photographs, it's going to group them together. And then it's going to create one panoramic image, which will be part of this uh, group. As you can see now, it's part of this group. And if you press the number 10, you can see that all of the nine images here at the bottom, they are part of it. And then there is the panorama image. Uh, as the cover image for this stack, they are called. So the reason why I do this, and that's something I want to show you, is because in this way I get, even out of the smallest drone, if you, for example, have a Mavic Mini 3 Pro, you get really high resolution out of this. Imagine you're stitching together uh, three 12 megapixel images, so you can get a lot better quality out of even the smallest drone. Uh, in this case, I have a really high resolution image. So what I want to do next is I want to edit this a little bit. Uh, I think the original shot uh, is a little bit pale or it's a little bit uh, overexposed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the exposure down a little bit. Then I want to create more contrast by darkening the shadows, adding or darkening the blacks in the image, maybe increasing the highlights a little bit, and then adding a little bit more contrast. And then I have a result that I'm a lot happier with. Uh, what I will do more is probably take the saturation down a little bit. You can see like by taking the saturation down, it will look a lot more like a, a painting. So the colors that you get here, it looks very gray, a little bit brownish. It really depends on where you photograph these rivers. Uh, sometimes it looks a lot more black. Uh, there are also places where there's a lot more rainwater flowing into uh, the river, so you get different colors. But in this case, I like, the, like more the, the black and white look. I might even take the saturation down a little bit more. Uh, then I'm pretty much done. So I can show you the before and after. So basically I just darkened uh, the photograph. So what you can now also do is, uh, of course I just used the crop that the panoramic function uh, decided for me. I can also adjust the crop. Uh, most of the time I will switch to a 2 by 3 uh, ratio to fit better with my other photographs. In this case, I will move it a little bit to the right. And then this would be my final image. Um, of course, because you have all this extra resolution, you can do a lot of things. You can crop even more. Uh, for example, if this is the area that you want to focus on, you can crop even more and even start turning uh, the photograph so it looks a bit more like this. And this could also be a totally fine image. And because you have so much resolution, you can, you can still get, even after cropping a lot, you still get a really high resolution image. 
So the reason why I picked this particular uh, pattern is because I like the flow a lot. I like this thick braid in the middle and then all the tiny little uh, details uh, on the side here. It almost, almost looks like a vein with uh, smaller veins coming out of it. As you can see, there's a lot of detail uh, in this shot. Uh, it's, I'm very happy with these kind of photographs. And it looks so surreal because you photographed it straight, looking straight down. It looks like a, almost like an artwork, even though this is actually a photograph. So that's it for this photograph. Uh, if you want to learn a lot more about drone photography, I have a really good ebook out. It's almost 100 pages. I talk about what drone to get, what to keep in mind when you buy a drone for photography, uh, how to prepare a shoot, how to research locations, composing while flying a drone, not only with glacial rivers, but I also talk about how to compose a landscape, how to use light to your advantage. And then I also show you how to create panoramas out of your shots. It's gotten a lot of good reviews, so if you're interested, go have a look at my website. Uh, if you want to purchase a copy uh, using the discount code uh, DRONEEBOOK20, uh, we'll get you 20% off. So, yeah, there's no time like the present. Uh, if you're interested in exploring more of the Highlands together with me or any other photographer I work with, I have a list of photography workshops in Iceland and in Greenland on my website which you can find in the description. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it and see you in the next one. Bye.